Okay, so network was misbehaving. Um, we go again. So on question eight, uh, and the question is there, a window is being built and the top is the same circle and the bottom is a rectangle. And then you've been given 15 meters of framing material. Uh, let X be the radius of the same circle. Express the total area of the window in terms of X. That's our first question. Question eight. So I'm saying the window, uh, this is part one. Right? So the window will have the base, uh, a rectangle. The top, a semicircle, like that. And then the radius of a rectangle, <laughs> Excuse the radius of the rectangle is x. Now we know that the radius would be half. I mean, the radius of the semicircle is x. So the radius is going to be half the rectangle. You see, since if I was to draw the whole the whole circle, I would have something like this. So the base, I mean, the its diameter would be that line of the rectangle there. So now we are not to draw um, the circle. We just want the semicircle. So suppose that that radius is x. Are we able to express uh, the area of this in terms of uh, in terms of x. So the question is this. Express the total area of the window in terms of x. So we know that, as uh, the way I've put it, if I label, I may want to say a, b, c, uh, d, let me put a d up there, e, okay? Maybe I should put A, B, C, D, E. Let me put F. Uh, F be the center of, of the circle. F be the center of the circle. Like that. Uh -huh. And then we are given the material, which is the perimeter of this to be what? To be 15. Now, since it's a semicircle, uh, the perimeter of C, D, E is going to be pi r. Remember, the perimeter of the whole circle is 2 pi r. Now, since we are dealing with the perimeter of a semicircle, half a circle, and they're just looking at the outer and not the inside line. That would be pi r. And then now, if I have pi r, um, meaning the perimeter of the whole thing, uh, as we can see, E f is x, meaning that E c the base. I mean, the top right, uh, rectangle is going to be equal to A, B. You see those sides are equal. And then since we have X, half of it, meaning the whole thing is 2X, so these two sides will be 2X each. So it means that I come to the perimeter here and say, okay, the A, B plus the E, C plus a E plus B C plus C D E, the whole thing should give us 15, which is the total perimeter, since we are given 15 uh, meters material. And so now we know that A B 
ECH are two X are two X AE and BC we don't know, but we know that they are equal. So uh, should we say let E they let A E uh, be equal to B C. Maybe we call it a different name. Let's call it Q. Uh, so that here we should say two Q. We should say two Q. Okay, so we have Q, Q there, and so two of them. And then plus the C D E is pi X. This whole thing equal to 15. So what would be our 2q? So our 2q is going to be 15 minus pi x minus 4x. These added, and then we take the other side together with the pi x. So meaning that q uh, is going to be 15 minus pi x minus 4x, and then we divide it by 2. So this is Q, meaning one side. So if I'm saying this is Q, this two is Q. So the length of that. And then now, how do we find the area? The area of the rectangle, I mean the area of the whole uh, structure is going to be the area of the rectangle, which is AD, okay? Multiplied by what? Multiplied by Q, which is BC, and then plus the area of the top part, uh, which is CDE, like that. So this is going to be AD, AD is 2X, and then multiplied by Q, Q is 15 minus 5x minus 4x over 2 and then plus what is the area of the semicircle it's pi x squared over 2 since you know that area of the full circle is pi r squared then the r is x then because it's the same circle, so we divide by two. And then this gives us 15x, I think this two and that two cancel, minus 5x squared, minus 4x squared, a plus 5x squared over two. So you see, we can write this in a bit simplified manner. We say 15x, we put this pi x and the pi over two together, we have minus pi x squared over two, and then minus four x squared. So this is the, this is the area in terms of x of, that window. This is part one. Part two was saying, find the dimensions of the window that maximize its total area. Find the dimensions of the window that will maximize its total area. So we're looking at part two now. So whenever we are asked to find the dimension that maximizes, we think of the, the applications of derivatives. So we differentiate A uh, with respect to X. Okay, so we're going to get 15 minus two pi X over two minus eight X. And then quickly uh, equate this to zero so that so we get 15 um, minus pi um, x 
minus ax equal to zero. And so we are looking for x. So x, uh, we factor out x. We're going to have negative five minus eight is equal to minus 15. So we divide by negative pi minus eight by negative pi minus eight. So we we'll have x is equal to 15 uh, divided by pi plus eight. Like that. If we want to confirm that this x is giving us maximum, we can as well differentiate uh, the area again. We get the second derivative. That will be um, minus pi minus eight, which surely is less than zero. So when the second derivative is negative at that point, or at that value of x, it shows that this x, this x is equal to 15 over pi plus eight. Uh, it gives us what? It gives us maximum. So this x gives uh, the maximum area. And now the question says, find the dimension of the window that will maximize its total area. So since you have X, remember, you may need to find, you want to say the rectangle. The rectangle is going to be, it should get, the base of the rectangle should be, should be two times that X, meaning it should be 30 over, I plus eight. Okay, that should be the dimension for the base of the rectangle, and then the height or the width of the rectangle should be Q. Now, where is Q? Uh, we found Q. Q is fifteen minus I. So that is 15, uh, so I'm going to say minus pi plus four multiplied by x. Which x? The x that you have found to be 15 over pi plus eight. And then the whole thing divided by two. This should be the widget, okay, of the rectangle. So these are rectangle dimensions. Okay. So these are rectangle dimensions. And then for the circle, you just say x radius. So the radius of the semicircle should be equal to x, the same x that you have found, 15 over pi plus 8. You see? So that's what we have. Hello. The question? The uh, question. Yes, sir. Um... I'm a bit lost from uh, why you differentiated uh, the, the area with respect to x for a second time. Yeah, well, the, what is g2a over g2, gx <laughs> is equal to negative 5 minus 8 less than 0. Okay, so here what I'm trying to say is uh, look at this. This, this guy. We know pi is a positive number, is it? So pi being a positive number, and also a positive number, we have negative, negative. So if you factored out, uh, so 
So if you factor down the, the <coughs> you have five plus eighteen. The print of it. Which is telling us that this number is what? This number is less than zero. Because of the minus that is outside. And so if the second derivative is negative, it's an assurance that what you have as your x there gives maximum. So that was just an assurance that is the x we are getting, is it giving maximum or not? So let's check the second derivative. And then we have found that the second derivative comes out to be negative for whatever x that you have. And good part, we only have one x. So that very x that we have is giving us a maximum value. So the x maximizes the area. And then now we go back to the structure, wherever there is x on each side, we put that x and then redefine the, the dimensions of the structure that we have. So let's go to the line. What was the thing? Eight. So we've got the line now. Eight. Eight. So let's go to question nine. A box whose base, a box whose base length is three times the base width, <laughs> is to be constructed. Okay. Okay. So how? Okay. A box whose base length is three times the base width, is to be constructed. The material used to build the top and the bottom. Uh, uh, okay. So I'll meet you again. Just to avoid the background noise. Okay, so the material used to build the top and the bottom post uh, is this assembly current, which is 10. Uh, so we call it pressure, 10 square centimeters. And the material used to build the side uh, cost six. Uh, we call it what? Oh, that's six pressure. So I just want to call it pressure. Uh, square centimeter. If the box must have a volume of 50 cubic centimeters, determine the dimension that will minimize the cost to build the box. So I want to determine the dimension that will minimize the cost. So we're given information about what is constructed and a bit of what would be its dimension. And then now let's see how this thing should look like, okay? So it's a box to start with. How does the box do? So this is question nine. So how does the box look like? Something like this. So something like this, um, and then like that. And then something like that. Just trying to remember how to draw a box. <laughs> yeah. And then this guy should come here and come to this far end. And then this guy, yeah, something like that. So now the length, the down part, we are told it's three times the width if this guy is the width. Okay, and then we'll have the height there. So the length is three times the width. If that is our width, then the length will be three times that width. That's what we are told. 
Okay. But now, what do we know? We know that the volume should be given by what? By height, width, length. Height, we don't know. Width, I mean, a width, length is three times width. Like that, meaning this will be three a edge at a brief squared. But then we are told that the volume, um, that if the box has a volume of 50, so if the box is to have a volume of 50, if this is to be the situation, then we are going to have H to be 50 over three a W squared. What else are we taught? We are told that the cost of building the box can be expressed uh, in a certain form because we are told that the cost of building, so the material used to build the top and the bottom cost is 10. And the material used to build the height cost is 6. Okay? So we put a cost function. So uh, the top, how many sides for the top? Two. Because we are told the top and the bottom. So we have top, bottom, 10, plus the sides, six. Uh, okay, let me come back. I've left out something here. So the top and the bottom, that plus six, I mean two first, and then six, because the sides also have, uh, they attached to the width and the height, the width and the height. Okay, like that, which when we simplify this guy, it will be 20 W uh, plus 12 WH. Then we have the expression for H from here. Could we substitute it in the cost function? We are going to have 20 W plus 12 W are uh, 50 over three uh, W squared, which is what? Uh, 20 W, this three can go there four times, then the four by 50, that is 200, and then the W and the square cancel, so we have a 200 uh, over W, like that. And then we differentiate the cost function. Of course, it's with respect to W. So we differentiate it, we're going to get a 20 from the 20 W and then minus 200 over a W squared. You know, when the W goes up, it to be like, you can write this as 20 W plus 200 uh, W minus one. And so when you drop, you have a minus and then minus two, so you can take it back down there. And then you will set this guy to zero. Of course, we are always looking for, for the minimizer or the maximizer, so that's why we are differentiating. And so if you take that guy on the side, you're going to have a slight uh, equal to 200 uh, over W squared. To the crossing, that would be 20 W squared. Uh, is equal to 200. The division there is that with W squared is equal to, uh, is it 10? Yes. It's equal to 10. So that W is equal to the root of 10. Now remember, it's supposed to be plus or minus with 10, but 
W is a side. So it's giving us, um, uh, it's giving us, uh, it's, it's like some distance. So it measures how long something is. So it cannot measure something in negative. So you ignore the negative part and deal with the positive. Okay, so then you go back and say, okay, so this guy, if you have to differentiate the second uh, that's this derivative, just to confirm if this stuff would be like minus or positive, what you would get, like what we did in the, uh, in the other question, you are saying, should I differentiate again? Okay, and this guy can be written as 20 minus a 200W minus two. So if I differentiate again, it's going to be 400, uh, over over W3. So you see, if you substitute a root here and have this positive, it will remain positive. So this guy of root 10 is going to be positive. So if the second derivative is positive at that value, it means that the value of substitute gives you minimum. Okay, so it means that we can now go back and get our, our dimensions. So what would be the length? Remember, we are told that the length is equal to what? To 3w. Now we know the w is root 10. Okay. And then the width is the same root 10. What about the height? We have found its function there as 50 over 3 uh, root 10 squared. That would be 50 over three by 10. So the 10 cancels here. So we get five over three as our height. So these are the dimensions um, that you're going to have for you to have the very most minimum of volume. I mean, that will minimize the, the cost uh, of building that box. So if you use those materials, then you're going to have this uh, the smallest cost to incur for the builder. Okay, now the zoom is cutting because of this 40 minutes issue. So when it cuts, it needs 10 minutes to, to do the recording. So we, we are joining back at what? 2048.